Yeah, so we are on a machine by Shri Dilavanji R40. In that one, we have a database called the Prime is there. Okay, so first point to be noted is that once you are creating a database using BBCA, the database entry information will be added to a file known as the ORA tab file, which is located on the etc folder. So ls hyphen l slash etc slash ORA tab. Okay, here you can see that a file is being created, and then we will be able to um, uh, open the file. Uh, just open the file va slash etc slash ORA tab. Then we'll be able to see a certain information. We can see that all the databases being created have an entry over here. For example, Prime is a database name. The second, uh, you can see that there is everything is being um, separated by a uh, colon. So there is an entry for a ASM instance is there. There is an, an, another entry for the RackDB in, uh, database is there. And there is an entry for the Prime database is there. So you can see that th this ORATA file consists of the three parts. Okay, here if you are looking, in this of the ORA table is following the format, format Oracle SID, Oracle Home, and then N or Y. Okay, each form a column is being separated by a column. So you can say that Prime is the name of the instance. Okay, Oracle Home is at YSID slash DB Home, and then N. N start for, uh, if the DB, the third file, that file indicates the DB start utility that the uh, database should do use. That means why it means it should start up the database automatically, and n means it will brought uh, it will not be brought up the or it will not be bringing up the database during the boot up system boot up time. So if you want to start up the database during your system restart or system boot up, you should enable this n equal to y. Okay, and if you don't want to start up the database automatically uh, during the system uh, boot time, you should set up this value to y. Sorry, to n. Okay, so here. First column will be that uh, database SID name. Second column will be the Oracle Home, and the third one will be uh, specifying whether the database should be starting up automatically or not. Is that clear? Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now our advantage here is that. He, this value, this ORATA file will be always updated by the uh, the DBC. Whenever the, the database is being created by the DBC, it will be updated. But if you are creating the database manually, this value will not be getting updated. So you have to make the entry uh, manually. You have to make the um, the entry to the ORATA file manually. Okay. Now to call, set up the environment variable, you can just call the uh, script. As I said, like we, to connect the database con correctly, you should set up the environment variable like Oracle SID name. Oracle uh, Home, Oracle LD Library Path, and the Path Variable. Okay. Either you can set up the, the commands manually, uh, the the environment variables manually, or else you can call a script called ORINV. This ORINV uh, script, if you remember correctly, during the time of the root dot search, it was copied to slash user slash local uh, bin directory. For example, if I'm giving which ORINV, you can see that the ORINV is available on user local bin directory. This is being done or copied to this location by the root.sh, which we called after the installation of the Oracle software. Remember this? Yes. Yeah. Now we can call the ORA ENV by giving the command dot space ORA ENV. Okay. Now it is asking you to enter the SID name. I'm giving the SID name as Prime. Okay. Now it says that the Oracle home is why should slash db home from where it is taking it is taking from the aura tab based on that from the oracle inventory it is going to for this particular oracle home the base is 11.2.11.2.0 this information is taken from the oracle inventory okay so from this by the setup it is able to get the path of the name of the instance by giving the command echo dollar oracle underscore sit you will be able to find out it's being set correctly and then echo dollar oracle underscore home. We can say that this environment variable is also set. So when you're calling the ORINV, all the environment variables are required for connection to the database is being set by the uh, this environment variable automatically. So this will be handy if you are having the different oracle home as well as the different decision name. So you can just call the script and it will be setting up the, all the environment variables. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Now 
we can uh, uh, start up we can uh, we can start up the database to start up the database you have to connect to the sql plus so sql plus slash us SysDBA. That's why I said during the time of installation, I was telling that there is a super user requirement. Is that there is a super user um, de de uh, for the database is the either it's a um, sys or SysDBA. I mean the super user should be connecting to the database instance as with the SysDBA privilege. So there is a two options. One is that you can connect with the uh, super user that is sys or SysDBA, or else there is one option. Okay. At that time, it will be asking the password. You have to give the password what you have given during the time of the database creation. It's given as Oracle. <coughs> okay, that's one option. Otherwise, you can. So here, the authentication. The when you are giving sys or sys DBA, the authentication is being done by the uh, database itself. How database is doing the authentication with a concept of password file, which I'll be explaining a bit later. Okay. Otherwise, you can connect to the database with the, the operate system authentication because we are connecting as Oracle, and the Oracle user is a part of the DBA group which we specified. Um, uh, sorry, uh, ID Oracle. Yeah. We are connecting as Oracle user, and Oracle user is a part of the group which we specified during the time of the installation as the Sys DBA group, which is nothing but DBA. Okay. So. With, with that means when you are giving slash a sys dba i am you go uh, connecting to the database with the os authentication because i am belong to the user who is the um, sys dba group or uh, who is a member of the sys dba group then i'll be able to start up the database so let's clear here and i'll be connecting square plus slash as sys dba okay now it's telling me that it is being connected to an ideal instance the reason is that I have not started the database. Is this much clear? Yes. How do you start? Okay. Sorry. How do you start? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Now we are going to start up the database. Now to start up the database, I can issue the command start up. Okay. When you are starting up, the database is going through through three stages. The first stage is that it's going to start up the instance by instance it allocates the memory that is we are specified on the or on our parameter file second it's going to start up the uh, background process once the, coming to the uh, database is uh, coming to the uh, no mount stage the first thing is that instance startup is also known as a no mount stage once the instance is mounted or instance is started then is the instance is going to locate the control file which is specified by the control file parameter the, on the parameter file okay Based on the control file location, it will locate the control file, okay, and it it will get a lock on the control file. And that stage is known as the mount stage. Then, once the database is coming to the mount stage, then the database will will be uh, the the background process will be reading all the data files as specified in the control file. And once it is able to read and hold the uh, data files, either in the read only mode or in the read write mode, then the database will get opened. If it is not able to uh, go, hold the uh, database in the either in the read only mode, read write mode, then the database will not be able to open. Is that clear? Again, I am repeating the uh, startup got three stages. One is a startup no mount, second is a startup mount, and then the third one is at open stage. In the startup no mount stage, it is going to start up the instance, including the memory plus the background process. In the startup mount stage, it is going to lock the control file, and the third stage is going to open the database in the either in the read only mode or on the read write mode. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Now I'll show, I'll just shut down uh, I'll shut down the database. Just don't worry about the different stages of the shutdown. I'm just shutting down. To show you that how to start up on the two diff three different stages. Okay. Now, let me clear here. Okay. I am just coming to the database once again with the sysdba privilege slash sysdba. Okay. And then I just issue the command startup no mount. Okay, in this stage, the database is started. But first question is that, from where the parameter file? As I said, like the the there is a uh, memory has to be allocated. Um, so where the memory information is located? Okay, 
the memory information is located during the time of the database creation, you would have seen that it is uh, giving a lot of parameters are there. This parameter is being specified on a parameter file, which is the instance specific parameter file. The default location of that parameter file is the Oracle home slash DBS directory. That means this, the parameter files are being located on the DBS folder, which is located on your Oracle home. Okay, so for example, here, we'll be going to your Oracle home slash Oracle home slash DBS. Okay, if you are giving LS hyphen L or LS hyphen LTR, you can see that there is a file called SP file prime dot ORA, which is the parameter file. So there are two types of parameter files are there. One is a text based parameter file and another one is that uh, the, the binary based parameter file. SP file stands for system parameter file, which is a binary based file parameter file which can be updated by only by using the SQL plus commands. The second one is that text based parameter file which can be modified by using the uh, on the normal text editor by using the command VA init prime dot over it. Okay, but the advantage with the uh, the text based parameter file is that text based parameter sorry uh, the disadvantage of the text based parameter file is that uh, the one thing it, it is easy to modify but the other uh, downside is that the changes done on the text based parameter file after the system restart or after the startup of the database instance will not be coming into effect only that the or else the changes to the text based parameter file will be in effect only after the restart of the database instance for example if you wanted to change the memory at that time if you want to change that memory then if it is a text based parameter file then you have to restart the instance but sp file allows to many changes to be taken place automatically without the restart of the database. It doesn't mean that all the changes can be taken place without the restart of the instance. That is wrong. But there are, uh, we'll be seeing how to find out the parameters which can be uh, done without a restart of the database instance. We'll be seeing that one. But on the nutshell, there are many parameters which can be changed uh, the, uh, without the restart of the instance if you are using a SP file. Is that clear? Yeah, and uh, how uh, fast it will reset the change? Moment, right? How? How? Fastness, time gap, uh, which it reset the changes. Can you change it? It's immediate. It's immediate, is it? It's Im yeah, yeah. Okay. So now another, the next point to be noted is that if you have the, say, if you, if you are looking, we have the two, both init prime as well as the SP file prime is there. So that means we have both the text based parameter file as well as the binary based parameter file is there. So which one take the precedence? If the SP file is there, it will get preference than that of the text based parameter file. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. So it means that our instance is being started for the time being. Our, you can say that our instance would have been started by the using the SP file. We can confirm that one by giving the command show parameter SP file. So here you can see that our instance is started by the parameter file or the SP file, which is known as the SP file prime dot ORA, which is located on the Oracle home slash DBS directory. So in that one, how much is the memory that is allocated? That much memory is being taken from the operating system now. For example, show parameter, or let me clear it. Clear screen. Show parameter SGA. Okay, you can see that SGA target is set as 450, sorry, 440. So here, both the uh, SGA is managed by the automatic SGA management and the size is 440 MB. So that much memory is taken from the operating system by this particular Oracle instance. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, now, Next stage, when you are go, now our database in the no mode stage, how we can find out? Select status from V dollar instance. The, data, the instance is started. Okay, it's in this startup the instance. Now we can, we have to issue the command mount command, that is alter database mount. If you want to mount, then the control file should be located and locked. So how the Oracle is going to find out what is the control file location? It is available from the parameter name control file. So you can find out the value by show 
parameter control. You can see that the control files are located on Vaishid prime prime slash control dot CTL and then other one is at Vaishid 11.2.0 flash recovery area uh, prime then control dot CTL. So when you're telling the database to mount, Oracle is going to look at the, both the control files and mount the control file. So once the database is mounting the control file or locking the control file, the database is changing to a mount stage. Is that clear? Yes. Now we can mount the control file by giving the command. Let's clear the screen once again. Alter database mount. Okay. Now the database is mounted. So re remember, we are not issued the startup mount because we are already issued the command startup uh, uh, no mount. Then again, one more startup will not be allowing. It will it will be telling that the instance is already mounted, uh, already running. We'll be seeing that one in the other stage. Okay. Now the database is mounted to so from the one stage to another stage to move. You have to issue the command alter database. So we have given the command alter database mount. Now you can uh, see the command, or to, you can see the effect of the database by giving the command select open underscore mode from v dollar sorry v dollar database. The database is mode. Select the status from the instance. Select status from v dollar instance. It's saying that the instances or the database is in the mount stage. Okay. Now let's move to the the uh, convert to the or open the database in the read read mode. If I issue the command to show you that error, what you would have got? I'm just using startup open. It is telling me that cannot start already running instance. We have to shut it down first. Now to open the database, the command will be alter. database open the database is open again select the command select in the open underscore mod from with all the database okay the database is open in the read mode select the status from the VLOL instance it is in the open stage. Is this clear? Yes. So, okay. so Vimal, for, for anybody to use the database, it has to, uh, uh, I mean, it has to be in an open state, right? So, right. okay. Any user other than the SysDBA user or system user, a uh, user who got the SysDBA privilege, anybody to a database connecting, either it will be on the open either as a read only mode or read write mode. That's mandatory. Okay. Yeah. No other users than other than the user who got the SysDBA privilege. The user who got SysDBA privilege are the user who's uh, in, uh, who are belonging to the uh, operating system uh, uh, SysDBA group. So uh, only the users can connect to the database in the mount stage. All others has to be connected uh, till when the database is either in the open stage, either as a read only or read write mode. Okay. Now we'll be seeing the stage at which how or how to shut down the database. The database shutdown can be proceeded with the, the three different stages or four different stages. One is a shutdown normal, second is a shutdown immediate, third one is a shutdown about, and the fourth one is a shutdown uh, uh, transaction. And then one more type of startup is there. One is a startup force, which will shut down the database in the, using the shutdown about and then it will start up the database. But that is not really considered any kind of the um, uh, startup or shutdown modes. So let's now we are in the um, uh, database uh, stage. Let's see the difference between the different uh, startup. Oh, sorry, different shutdown. Okay, in the first stage, let's let me before that let me make make a connection. Um, 
let me rest duplicate this connection okay. here i will be connecting su hyphen oracle okay let me first connect to the database like sql plus system slash oracle i connect to the database okay now let me give the shutdown okay shutdown and the shutdown normal both are same okay now the first the, the first point of shutdown normal it will not after you issue the command any of the shutdown either the shutdown normal or shutdown transaction, shutdown immediate, shutdown about, any of the commands will not allow the new users to be connected. Okay, that's common to all the things. Now, shutdown normal, if you are giving, it will not, or it will allow the existing users to do any kind of activity. For example, I'm just on the normal user, I already connected. Now, let me try to create a table. Create table, new tab, name, where can, of 100 it's, it's allowing me to connect okay but let's try to connect as a new user if you have an oracle skill plus system slash oracle it is telling that shutdown in progress connections are not permitted is that clear? Yes. Okay. Now, so it uh, the existing users can do any activity. It will now let me the let's see the existing user disconnecting and what happens here. You can see that the database is closed and database is dismounted. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now, so here you can see that when you are giving shutdown normal, it is going to do a checkpoint. It allows the users to uh, uh, disconnect. Once users are disconnecting from the, uh, I mean, it will, it will wait for the users to uh, finish off their activities. Once users, all the last users are exited from the database, it will do a checkpoint, and that means all the modified data uh, will be returned to the database. So after that, there is no need for any instance recovery. So the database will be uh, a clean database once you are giving the shutdown normal or the default shutdown command. Now let me start up the database once again quickly. Okay, database connected. Uh, the same way I'll be connecting to as a system manager user. Okay. Now I'll go to the first node, and then uh, what I'll do that I'll be issuing the command shutdown immediate. Okay. Now here I'll give a select select star from tab. It is telling that connection lost, and you can see that the database is down. So what it means is shutdown immediately again allow, will not allow any users to connect. Further connections are not there. That's that's confirmed. Now immediately it will terminate all the users immediately. Okay, then it will do a checkpoint. That means all the modified data buffer data in the buffer cache will be returned to the data files. So that that means there is no instance recovery once you are shut down. Issue the shutdown about. Oh, sorry, shut down immediate. Now the database will be dismounted and the database will be totally down. So that means shut down immediate is the quickest way of cleanly shutting down the database. So it will terminate all the existing connections. All the committed data will be returned back to the return to the uh, data file. All the uncommitted transaction will be rolled back. No any instance recovery is required after you do, do the shutdown immediate command. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now we'll be again um, starting up our database, and we'll see how the shutdown transaction is going to work.
Okay, I connect to the database, and we have created a database called New DB, right? I'll what I'll do that I'll insert a record to a New DB to make a transaction. Insert into new tab values worship. Okay, but I haven't issued the commit or rollback. So either I issue the commit or rollback, the transaction will not be completed. So I'll issue the command from here. Shut down. Okay. Transaction. Okay. Now let me try to insert one more record. It is allowing because until I commit or rollback, the database will not be shut down. Now I issue the command commit. Okay. Now let me try to insert one more record. Let's see whether it's allowing me. It is telling that I lost the contact. So if you're going to come, the database is down. Is that clear? So shut down transaction will allow the current users to finish off their current transaction. Once the transaction is completed, then the database will be shut down cleanly. So when will, uh, how many transactions will it allow below before shutting down? There is no, no limit. There is no, li no limit. It will allow only one transaction. There is no further transaction. Either you commit or roll back, finish off. Okay. So, so, we, okay. so we know the name. That's the reason I showed. Yeah, hold on. Um, uh, that's the reason I allowed it to uh, finish off that one and try to answer one more record. It didn't allow me. Before that, it terminated my session. Fine. So all the uses, the current transaction it will allow you to commit. To commit. Yeah, Hamad, tell so, me. So, Vimal, I mean, for instance, I mean, if it's like a multi-user uh, environment where database is being hit, I mean, for instance, if one guy inserts something and, you know, whatever happens, he forgets to commit, then the database is waiting for, and how long does it wait before it's make, it makes a decision that, I mean, there's no need to wait? To, no, there is no wait, there is no uh, limit. It will wait till that user either commit or roll back. So that's the reason at the time DBA has to take a decision to terminate that user, either kill that user or else instead of uh, cancel the shutdown immediate, uh, shutdown transactional and then uh, go ahead with the shutdown immediate. Okay, so once you once you invoke shutdown transactional, can you, uh, I mean, can you again go back and say shutdown uh, immediate? Yeah, you have to, what you have to do that, you have to just give a control C. Okay. okay, you would have been uh, starting the command from a, your command window, right? right. So you just control, uh, uh, see that, that at that time it will become the user has cancelled that uh, shutdown command and then you should the shutdown. Okay. Right? Yeah. So this is clear. Now let me start up the database once again and then see what happens with the startup command. So here all you can see that when you are giving shutdown uh, transaction or shutdown immediate, it is going through the different phases like database close, database dismounted, and the instances shut down. So all the three, uh, when the startup, it is the startup no mount, startup mount, and database open. When it's coming into shutdown, it's going to be uh, take place in the reverse of that one. Shutdown um, uh, transaction, uh, sorry, uh, database close, database dismounted, and instance down. Okay. Now let's see how the abort is going to queue. I'll just issue the command shut down about. It's instant shutdown. Okay, so that means there is no checkpointing, there is no proper closage. It's just like a power failure. So once you the once you shut down about, then the next time when the instance is coming up, instance will go undergo a procedure called instance recovery. At that time, all the committed transactions will be uh, reapplied to the database all the uncommitted transaction will be rolled, rolled back from the database. So normally, after the shutdown about, the database startup will take a lot of time, depends upon the number of transactions happened uh, during the time of the database uh, shutdown. Is that clear? Yes. Any other questions on this topic? Okay, if no other questions are there, then probably we'll stop.